Fasting is promoted as the way to increase fat loss, energy levels, and enhance brain function. But how true is this? As research in fasting advances, more and more people are taking a note of this seemingly simple yet powerful way of dieting. It's already in most biohacker toolkits, there are thousands of books written on it, there is scientific backing and numerous health experts are still talking about it. But what's all the fuss about? Can extending the time you don't eat food actually bring all the benefits? And if so, what's the physiology behind it? Well, it's great you're here, because today we're gonna go in depth of discovering the science of why and how fasting works. We'll explain the mechanisms and we'll showcase the potential benefits of fasting. Strap yourselves, let's go! To understand why the topic of fasting is important at all, we need to take a note of one thing. Obesity rates are steadily growing, metabolic syndrome is on the rise, and diabetes rates are constantly increasing. Why is this important? Because all of these things are interrelated. Once one cannot efficiently use and utilize carbs to produce energy, due to potentially insulin resistance or the pancreas is taxed or there's increased inflammation in the body, we develop what's called metabolic deficit. So basically, we're trying to overeat to compensate for the loss of energy or insufficient energy, but it doesn't get better because we're not getting more efficient and utilizing sugars. We tax our pancreas, our insulin sensitivity decreases, we go on towards the path of developing insulin resistance and we cannot manage our blood sugar levels, which spikes up inflammation. So, for the sake of simplicity, we're gonna say that these benefits like lose fat and weight, improve body composition, reduce inflammation, and increase energy levels are what the average Joe or most of us want. Whether one chooses to fast by extending the non-eating window or to practice the ketogenic diet or even try out caloric restriction by reducing carbohydrates, the benefits are similar. Why? Because the physiology of fasting, keto, caloric restriction and low-carb high-fat diet primarily depends on one thing, reducing the frequency of eating carbs. So how does fasting work? What is the physiology behind it? After a carbohydrate-rich meal, we have a lot of glucose. That spikes up blood glucose levels, glucose is absorbed through the GI tract and used as energy store. Glucose that's in excess gets turned into glycogen in the liver or adipose tissue, so as fat. When we fast, we tend to deprive our body from glucose. This in turn starts breaking down glycogen to glucose so we can use up glucose for energy. In about 10 to 14 hours in humans, we use up our glycogen reserves, so the body has to tap into fat for fuel. Of course, in metabolically flexible or keto-trained people, this is faster. So by breaking down fats or lipids into free fatty acids, our body learns to become more metabolically flexible using an alternative source of energy or ketones. When glucose is ingested, the hormone insulin is secreted. Insulin tries to transport glucose into cells and tissue to be used up as energy. Insulin matches the levels of glucose, which means the more glucose we ingest, the more insulin we secrete. Now, that's all good, but with a carb-centric diet, with a constant ingestion of high volumes of glucose, our insulin levels are always up and elevated. Now, why is this important? Because constant elevation of insulin leads to something called insulin resistance, which makes your cells be desynthesized, your tissues be desynthesized to sugars, which makes it hard for insulin to recognize glucose and transport it. This leads to an increase in blood sugar levels, makes managing blood sugar a lot harder, and increases inflammation in the body. It's exactly the thing that leads to metabolic deficits and inability to create energy. This contributes to weight gain. By cutting calories, especially sugar, we give the pancreas time to reset and secrete insulin better. This makes managing blood sugar a breeze and it reduces the risk of obesity, diabetes and weight gain. Additionally, 
Fasting, especially fasting at longer time intervals like 24 to 48 hours, stimulates something called autophagy. Autophagy is a way of self-eating where the body sort of cleanses its junk, its toxins, its misfolded proteins and dysfunctional cells, etc. to help you sort of reset your body metabolism and create a healthier environment. In metabolically flexible people, of course, autophagy is faster and in those who fast every day, for example, doing the 16 to 8 hours fast, you're always in kind of a mid-ketosis state where autophagy is kind of working at a low level in a way. See, when you eat a lot of foods, the cells start feeling comfortable to start dividing in two and growing. Let's split the cell into healthy and dysfunctional part. During the catabolic phase of autophagy, the body in a way eats itself up to sustain energy. By doing so, it removes dysfunctional cells and misfolded proteins. It's sort of an internal detox, an internal cleanse, if you will. Now, let's go on to the benefits and skim through the research on fasting. First is weight loss. Fasting partially supports weight loss due to the practical caloric restriction it sort of puts you in. Less time to eat, less food to eat. A systematic review of 41 articles with 27 trials in overweight and obese patients show intermittent fasting aids in weight loss from 0.8% to 13% at baseline. Fasting also seems to have beneficial effects on the adiponectin to leptin levels, which are great to reduce inflammation and control appetite better. Another review shows that the three forms of fasting, or the 5-2 fasting, alternate day fasting and time-restricted eating can lead to moderate weight loss of around 3-8% during a period of 8-12 to 12 weeks. Metabolic health is all about improving the efficiency of creating energy or ATP from calories. Being metabolically healthy means having optimal markers for metabolic health. These are things like your lipid profile, glycemic variability, insulin sensitivity and blood sugar levels. Having them at a good ratio means you're more metabolically healthy. Otherwise, metabolic syndrome kicks in which is a combination of metabolic abnormalities like central obesity, insulin resistance, hypertriglyceridemia, and increased cholesterol. Research shows that fasting by reducing energy intake and sugar consumption leads to a decrease in insulin production, thus improving insulin sensitivity and blood glucose control. Next is, besides improving lipid profile, Fasting can lead to a reduction in LDL by 20 to 25 percent, total cholesterol by 10 to 21 percent, and triglycerides by 14 to 42 percent, potentially reducing cardiometabolic risk. Excessive inflammation is something we don't want if we care about anti-aging. It means greater risk to develop disease. It is a less healthy environment to live in. It means higher DNA damage, greater oxidative stress, which is just all speeding up the process of aging. And excessive sugars and frequent food consumption can lead to an increase in inflammatory markers. Specifically on the topic of inflammatory markers, extended Ramadan fasting has shown to reduce inflammation and attenuate pro-inflammatory cytokines. Then fasting can reduce inflammation activation in numerous metabolic, neurological, inflammatory and cardiovascular conditions, amongst other. Another study shows that 12 months of intermittent fasting successfully improved inflammatory factors or markers like interleukin-6, interleukin-1-beta and tumor necrosis factor alpha were also improved. Next, fasting can also improve brain health and cognitive function. By increasing certain neurotropics, it may affect neuroplasticity and slow down brain aging. And also, keto or fat-fueled brains are known to be less hyperactivated and more alert. Additionally, fasting helps the brain flush out toxins and junk cells. Beyond pure energy, ketones like BHB can affect neurotropic factors like BDNF, known to increase synaptic plasticity and stress resistance. Fasting induces uh, a light cellular adaptation in neurons which may improve plasticity, neurogenesis and stress resistance. And lastly, it helps the brain detox, 
by potentially reducing amyloid plaque buildup and inflammation, which is common in neurodegenerative diseases. If you're interested in checking the science behind fasting and all these details in depth, make sure to check out this article we've written right here. It covers the topic more in depth, way better than I can speaking. So if you're eager, hop on, link in the description. Hope you have a fantastic day and I'll see you at your breakfast tomorrow at 12 p.m.